All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Samar Kamal. I'm the VP of Marketing at Mine. And today I have a very exciting session for you, a little bit different than what we usually do. If you've been following us, visiting our YouTube channel, you see that we have a lot of uh, presentations with customers. We love to let the customers tell their stories. But really what we notice is every time, you know, between the, the customer telling their story, the questions, that we're left with a little bit of time for Kobe, our product officer, to show off the product and demo it for you. So we thought to really do something a little bit different these couple of weeks at the end of the summer and to give you a deeper dive in terms of the product, take some of your questions maybe. And really what we've noticed is we wanted to talk a little bit more about something that customers and prospects bring uh, to conversations with us all the time. And it's all around the cost of privacy. And, uh, you know, it's, this doesn't just include the actual dollars or the fines and, you know, things that you could hear about in the headlines or even could be household conversations, you know, these days. We want to really dive deeper in terms of what does it take to, you know, deal with issue, issues such as data subject requests? What does it take to actually build the data mapping? When do you, you know, go about doing data mapping and feel like this is actually something that you need? So this is going to be a deep dive. Uh, feel free to drop your questions uh, anytime. You know, we'll try to take them as they come in. Um, and we'll have a, hopefully a roundtable discussion. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm the VP of Marketing. It's been uh, you know, a couple of years you know, for me here at uh, Mine. It's been incredible, very gratifying. You know, I am based in the US. The company is based mostly in Tel Aviv. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, this will be really dealing with the organizations and the actual conversations that they have. And hopefully we have enough time to demo the product uh, for you. Um, a little bit more about us. Really, you know, we, the company is almost now four years old. But from day one, we try to focus on building a solution that is scalable and focused for enterprises. Uh, we, as you might know, we started in the uh, B2C world. We took a lot of that technology that, you know, th what people love and what differentiates us, and we built it into, you know, this B2B privacy platform now. Uh, we're really proud that we're backed by incredible, you know, folks from around the world and the advisory board that we have. We have folks such, such as Ms. Juta Williams, you know, she leads privacy now at Reddit. Uh, Ari Schwartz, uh, he used to be an advisor for the White House. A couple of incredible, you know, folks here. Um, so really proud, you know, for what we're building and we're excited for, you know, what's to come at the company. Um, something we're very proud about as well is we are the number one leader at G2 privacy management category. Uh, we have over now 50 reviews from customers touting what we will be talking about and loving what we're building. Uh, as you can see, you know, our customers are enterprises and also, you know, mid-tier and smaller companies all over the world. Uh, happy to have you connect with them as well. And we've been rated, you know, recently as a top 100 software company at G2. Uh, so all around, you know, incredible things and hopefully be better things to come in. Um, Kobe, I want to give you the floor a little bit. And if you could please introduce yourself. Yeah, so uh, hey, everyone. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, so my name is Kobe, co-founder and uh, chief product officer here at Mind. So uh, uh, working with uh, with the company since <laughs> since the beginning, so around five years, uh, bringing a, a, a long experience around uh, consumer product and uh, an enterprise products, especially SaaS. Uh, work in my last role as a venture capitalist, uh, investing in around uh, 11, 12 companies. Um, in all stages from seed stage to kind of uh, early growth uh, and really excited to be here. So uh, thanks for, thank you very much for joining. Awesome. awesome. All right, let's dive in. So Kobe, you know, you talk to customers. I don't know how many conversations at this point you take every day. Um, I want to talk about the privacy experiences, you know, these, you know, all kind of challenges and the cost that comes to it. And, you know, on purpose, we put fines the last step here, these are the things that people hear about, you know, you have to comply with the regulations at the end of the day. But if you dive deeper and if you actually put, you know, your feet in the shoes of these privacy professionals, there are a lot of other things that come into play before actually thinking about these fines and the headline numbers. Walk us through some of those challenges and the cost that comes with these uh, issues. Sure. So, um, I think, yeah, as you mentioned, like I would put fines, you know, aside. I know that like that's something that is uh, like uh, the easiest thing to state. But 
I, I think like let's put that aside for a second. Uh, privacy regulations are you know laws. Basically, you need to uh, comply with them. This, those are not like standards that um, you want to uh, it, that 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 are kind of optional. Those are uh, obligatory things by law. Um, so you need to have those implemented in, in, in inside the company. Now the thing is that oftentimes uh, what people will overlook is the cost of you know cost of operation. Um, it's not only about you know paying for uh, a system or um, running and uh, and doing some manual work. It's about the um, the employees and the time and the effort and the bandwidth that you are going to put in those processes. Um, and I divided here um, into two buckets, the DSR handling, which is more operational, uh, receiving a privacy request, managing it, um, fulfilling the, uh, you know, the requirement, basically the, the, the data subject right, and the data mapping, which is kind of, you know, building your uh, internal governance, making sure that you are on top of the game in terms of uh, uh, the data and the organization. Um, so those are kind of the main buckets that we are going to focus on today. And I think the main thing to be that, that the main theme that we are going to discuss will be, you know, how the complexity of the organization kind of look like. If we are talking mm -hmm. about a subject request, there will be some questions such as the volume of a privacy request that you are getting, the uh, sensitivity of data that you are handling with, the industry that you are acting on. Uh, those are kind of in the DSR handling uh, uh, area. When we talk about data mapping, um, it's about you know data risk management and, and understanding how big is the organization, the complexity of being on top of uh, um, the data and the data mapping the organization. So those are kind of the main area that we are going to focus on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, let's dive deeper. You know, a couple of things that we focus on here are data subject requests, DSRs. And then the data mapping and uh, reporting. A um, couple of things that the team, you know, collected, you know, some facts uh, from Gartner, a recent study from Privacy Operations that talked about some of the costs, not just you know in terms of dollars, but the time and effort, as you mentioned, that goes into that. Yeah. And they're just incredibly. We knew it was a, a big, challenging, you know, issue, but these numbers are incredible. Fourteen hundred bucks is the cost per DSR. This could, you know, go from, you know, collecting it to the customer reputation and the issues that could come after to the fines and, you know, the team handling it. Uh, it could take, you know, and these are, you know, facts for per Gartner uh, for companies with 70 customers and above. Um, it takes such company one and a half hour per DSR per system to handle and alleviate the issue. You know, talk about the, the manual tasks and the back and forth that could happen, that it could take this long. And as I mentioned, this is per system. Yep. Usually uh, for such companies, uh, it's up to nine systems that, you know, this sensitive data in there. It goes on and on. And it's incredible, you know, how complex just handling data subject requests could be. Um, I'll let you take it over from there and you could walk us about, you know, other, you know, issues and metrics and what could, you know, um, impact and, you know, to measure the risk that could come from both uh, DSRs and data mapping. All right. So let's uh, basically uh, the, the topic that you just mentioned is being covered in the, in, in the next two slides. So uh, and, and I think that's something that is very unique uh, about the way that we are looking at things is, you know, is, I think we should look at it on a very pragmatic, you know, kind of level. Um, so if we go to the next slide uh, for a minute to talk about the, the DSRs, um, what I try to do here is kind of discuss, you know, what I described before, uh, complexity versus the automation. It doesn't mean that you, you have to do the automation. Uh, it just, it's a question of what is the level of complexity in the organization. If you have like a, lo a large volume of, uh, of requests, if you, have, if you are dealing with highly complex system, all those are questions to be asked. But basically, if the company just started, you get like two, three requests, you know, uh, per quarter or something like that. Um, maybe what you need to do is just to start with the privacy center, some manual handling. Don't go so big and deep on the, the automation. But yes, you do need to demonstrate that you have the processes in place. You have like the ability to allow users um, or employees uh, today to send privacy requests. Uh, and, and submit it in, in, in a way that, you know, 
uh, adheres to the, to the requirements of the regulation. Now, the more the complexity grows, uh, maybe, you know, before, even before we talk about automations, let's talk about setting up auto automated workflows in the organization. You have like two, three teams that are dealing with a multiple systems. You get three, four uh, privacy requests a month. Maybe a workflow will be good enough uh, at this stage of the company. However, once we are growing and now we, we are talking about a company that gets more volume, like let's say uh, 10 requests a month, the complexity is higher. You are dealing with a stack that is, that is bigger, like 15 system, 20 system, things like that. Then you might want to consider to start putting some automation to play. Usually you will start with automation that are to the system that are more complex. And then you will go on and on to kind of fulfill the entire uh, stack with automation up until when you get to a company that gets hundreds of requests per month, and then we want to put them on a full autopilot mode, full automation. Of course, the solution, the system that you need uh, will be different. The cost that you will pay will be, will be different. And I think a company needs to ask itself where it is like in this scale. If we go to the next slide, um, you will see that, you know, this is like the, the, the data that you just shared, but basically, you know, if we have a single system and we have uh, a, a request that was uh, brought by, uh, was submitted by a, by a data subject, usually it will take around one and a half hours invested by different people, different member of the team in order to handle a single deletion from a single system. Uh, usually it will be like, uh, you know, let's say around 20, 30 minutes from the legal team, 20, 30 minutes from the uh, IT team maybe, or from the system manager, but all combined, the average is around one and a half hours. If you have around nine systems, we are talking about 13.5 uh, hours to handle it. So this is how kind of you do like the, the, the bottom up to the Gartner uh, uh, cost per DSR. Uh, and by and large, you would say that, you know, when you get to the area of like seven, you know, to 10 uh, DSRs a month, that is the time that you need to start automating stuff. In the 10 to 15, we see companies really, really, really see a positive ROI for full-blown automation. Um, so that's kind of uh, how to look at it. And I think the company needs to find a solution that can scale together with it uh, in terms of cost and in terms of the solution that is being provided. That's for the DSR you know, area. Mm -hmm. Uh, question here, you know, f about finding a solution. It sounds to me that as literally like the scale that you showed us and the complexity where you had at the bottom, you know, we, we're providing a capability that will fit, you know, that customer depending on the amount of DSRs that they are handling. Is that correct? Correct. So if we go back to the previous slide, you would see that, you know, at the beginning of the process, we have privacy center manual handling. Basically, just make sure that you have uh, a way for the end user to submit their privacy request, a way for, you know, even if you have an app on the App Store, you need to have the, this button and you need to, to make sure that you have like a, a way for users to submit a request and that you have a centralized log with all the requests, you know, uh, handing by the user and you, you are documenting uh, the process. So just have something as simple as that. Uh, if, you, if the volume is limited and then you can demonstrate the compliance with the log. And then mm -hmm. the more com the complexity grow, then you add on top of this on a modular level you add on top of this more and more and more capabilities, workflows, some automations, full automations, all the way to like the full uh, autopilot mode. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you. Great. Uh, so yeah, going back, let's talk now data mapping. And I know a couple of things that come up a lot is, you know, reporting back, you know, you, you do the data mapping, you know, from the discovery to inventory to classification. And now you have, you know, what do you do with all this data? And, you know, it's a little bit controversial. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts, of, you know, why you think that's wasteful. And then similarly, as controversial is integrating everything, you know, as I mentioned, how these, all these many systems, you know, data in the cloud, so many different clouds. Why do you think that these two things could be wasteful? So I think, again, it goes back to kind of building a pragmatic uh, solution and understand the use case. What do you want to achieve? And if the, the end game is to understand, to have governance of data systems, to have governance of data types, what you have in the organization, doing that manually means that you need to, 
to uh, submit you know, questionnaires, uh, ask teammates in the organization what system they are using. By 99% of the cases, they will give you a list, but it will not be the full list because you know, people don't remember all the system that they ever interacted with. Um, so that's one point. Second is that by the time you finish with the process, it will be outdated. Um, and the third point is that this is a huge, you know, uh, uh, you know, process to do when you do it manually. That takes a lot of time of teams, uh, of teammates, of, of of people doing things that are outside of their core uh, core needs. So the, the 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 cost here is, you know, is is significant. And I think that if you can have a solution that can help you with that that will be really powerful. When we talk mm -hmm. about integrating everywhere is wasteful, um, you know, oftentimes what you see is that going ahead and scanning all your tech stack, scanning the, all the network, the amount of time that you need to invest, the cost of those solutions is going to be very high. Because then you see that companies get stuck on six to nine to one year you know, uh, a month, nine months of uh, implementation processes um, where you can really reduce this effort if you are going more pragmatically and find mm -hmm. solutions that will, you know, understand what is, what is that that we want to achieve? Do we really want to build the ROPA? We want to understand what is the core data types that we have in the organization and uh, uh, what are the business processes that we are doing with it? So maybe there is another way to find something that kind of uh, provides you with a solution that will be quick on the one hand, automated, um, and you know, will strive to get as close as possible to being accurate. Um, so that's kind of what I think. I think that the two extremes are wasteful. You need to find something in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. You know, so talk about basically work smarter and not work harder, if you will, and be yeah. like you say. So yeah. I Again, it's the same. Just with different methods and like dive deeper in terms of like, what do you define? You know, how do we do it? And what are the tools that we provide to do, you know, multiple stages, if you will, of discovering data and classifying it? Great. So I think, you know, um, everything we have done, and that's what sets mine apart and might makes us unique. Um, everything we have done was to, you know, throughout the process was to identify the tools that can really help uh, help you achieve uh, the end goal, the use case of building a proper ROPA, the DPIAs, and all those assessments uh, in a way that will be efficient as possible. So, for example, um, you know, understanding that we need a solution that will be fast, continuous, uh, and not painful when you do data system discovery. We provided the email technology, the the the, the way to, to 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 kind of understand and monitor the interactions between employees and data systems. But while doing that, we are able to get, you know, all the way to shadow IT, all the way to kind of all the systems that people interacted with. Like a good example from recent days now is that everybody in, every, in almost every organization I hear about the, those words of, uh, you know, I have the employees trying to hook up on, you know, new system, new, new open source systems with chat GPT stuff, like GPT solution here and there and here and there. Now, the risk there is not only about privacy, it's also now about IP and other things. So how can you really keep track of all those data systems? Scanning only the single sign-on is not going to be enough. Scanning only the procurement system is not going to be enough. So with the email technology, we found something that is very slick, easy to connect, continuous, and provide you with, uh, with, with, those, uh, with those insightful you know, insights that you need. So that's like one example. Um, then we have for the data classification, we said we figured out the minimum requirement would be to understand what do you do with those systems. Now, you know, maybe we can develop some AI of our own that can really help you do those, you know, those, those estimates. So, for example, if the tech stack of a company composed of, let's say, 80, 90 percent of, 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 of it is like a very structured SaaS platforms, if that's the case, we can really go ahead, analyze their privacy policy of every single SaaS platform, analyze their uh, API documentation, and give you a very smart prediction of what do you do with it. And by doing that, we created a solution that in the very first step in the slide, you see here, email and AI context. Basically, a company can go in, they can have a full platform that will identify all the data systems that they have based on the 
te email technology that I described before. It will provide them with the suggestions for, you know, how do you use those tools in terms of data types, in terms of processing activities. It will be the baseline for Europa. And you can be up and running demonstrating your privacy and be on top of things. For a company that is in the lower end of complexity, that's, you know, provides a very cost-effective solution uh, to the problem. The more we grow, the more the complexity grows, and we have a company that is now multinational, uh, uh, or you have a company with, you know, more system and the tech stack is growing, you have, uh, uh, you are dealing with highly sensitive information, then we need to add more context. It is not going to be enough. So add on top of that more data sources discovery to get a context, like cloud scan. Add on top of that some scans to the actual systems, like smart data sampling. So what we are saying here is that if you have a stack of, let's say, 100 systems, don't go ahead and scan all of it. Let's identify the risk. Let's identify the risky systems, the, the more complex systems, and scan those. This is what we do with the smart data sampling. So again, mm -hmm. the idea is start small, depending on the complexity of the, of the organization, and build on top of it. While you have a system like the MinOS that can provide you all the way to full integration, full scan, what you see there in the, in the, in the yellow box. So you can build in stages. You can get an immediate value within a few weeks from the onboarding that will be 90% accurate. Then you build on top of that based on the risk of the company, the, the risk of the data, sorry. Uh, the complexity of the company, how big it is, and so on and so forth, all the way to full scan. And if you are a, good, a big enterprise, probably you need all those levels. Um, so that's kind of the pragmatic approach that we are, you know, that we that we discuss, and it allows it to be very cost effective in in that aspect. Incredible. Thank you. I hope this was very educational for everybody, you know, to understand, you know, how to handle DSRs, how to handle data mapping. What are the different methods that you should be tackling it, depending on where you are within your growth uh, you know, journey. Um, let's uh, dive you know, a little bit, maybe very quickly, uh, Kobe, if you could give your elevator pitch in terms of the different modules that we provide. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of a, a high level you know, slide showing uh, um, the entire uh, system high level from module perspective. So when you connect to mine uh, OS, you have a system that can grow together with you, privacy regulation agnostic, and can provide you all the client-facing side of things like the DSR handling and the consent management modules and the actual core of your privacy program with data mapping, uh, running all the data governance activities. What we talked about today were the two left green pillars there, the data source of discovery and the data classification, but there is like a lot going on around uh, around every single step of, uh, of, of the platform. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Great. Thanks, Kobe. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. And if you could just give, you know, maybe a, a really 360 tour of the platform, just so we can show, you know, folks, how do things look like and some of these different methods, maybe that you mentioned. Yes, of course. Happy to. All right. Let me know. Um, Kobe, maybe I, we can tackle a question that came in while you prep. Yeah, go ahead. That go ahead. Uh, DSRs are easy to understand because you have to respond if you receive them. But data mapping isn't as obvious. How does a company know when it's time to begin data mapping? So data mapping is something that you have to have in terms of uh, the privacy regulation. It requires you to understand what is uh, uh, this, what are the systems that you have that hold data inside of them, what data that, that you have and basically justify the processing of this data. That's like the requirement. Um, the, a small company probably have, you know, a different uh, complexity. So probably it will be easier for them uh, to, to identify those, uh, those, uh, those systems with less of integrations and less of uh, discovery mechanisms and so on and so forth. All of them, the larger ones and the smaller one needs to be able to justify the use of, uh, of, of data. Uh, you do that by building the processing activities. If you don't uh, justify the data, either you go on data minimization or, or uh, you revisit uh, uh, Europa and so on. Um, once you have that, that's like the baseline of the data map. You know, if you are dealing with 
you have some, for example, if you're dealing with highly sensitive information or uh, dealing with uh, minor, uh, minors uh, kind of uh, uh, um, information, then probably you need to run some DPIAs. Um, so that's where you, you actually manage the risks. But doing a data map is something that is uh, obligatory to, to every company. Just the complexity kind of differ between different uh, sizes and, and complexity of companies. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you. Please go ahead. All right, so uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and start by talking about the discovery, how you, how you can discover all those systems in an automated fashion. Um, for that, what we did at Mine was to build what we call the radar, kind of staging area in the platform that allows you to connect, depending on the, on the, on the company and their, uh, the appetite, um, is basically to connect multiple sources that can help you identify those data systems. Each one of them has its own unique you know, uh, uh, pros, cons, and, uh, and benefits. So if we look at website scan, for example, it is going to be very limited in terms of the uh, coverage. However, it is going to be very important in terms of context, providing you the context of the customer-facing systems. Then we can talk about connecting the cloud environment and, and, uh, and, and doing, doing the data classification there in order to identify databases, storage buckets, warehouses, and so on. And then we can talk about single sign-on or procurement systems where you can identify all the things that are being managed by you know, the, the company. Everything I described so far is looking inside the perimeter. Those are the things that are being managed. However, what about you know, the example I gave before, uh, like the ChatGPT, the, the, the Shadow IT? In order to cater for that, we created the email technology. What we do there is we analyze or we monitor the interactions between employees and data systems. And with that, we can get to retroactive discovery, to employee usage, to shadow IT, and to over 95% of coverage only with that technologies alone. The results of this will be that we will be able to build an inventory of all the employees in the company and understand the data sources that they are interacted with, interacting with. And when you combine all of it together, we'll be able to see that, you know, in this case, 200 systems and the number of employees that are connected to each one, each one of those systems. And then... We don't leave you only with that. We also provide you with metrics that will help you decide what needs to be moved into the inventory, what needs to be stayed, you know, or moved to the unused assets uh, based off of usage analysis and the employee number. Once we have done that, that's the email technology that I just described. So within a few hours, you can get like a full understanding of what's going on in the organization. Uh, and it's a continuous discovery, meaning that if something was added to the, to the list, you will get to know about this. Um, once you have that in place, things are be, will be moved into the inventory itself. And this is where the mine AI kind of comes to play. You have two types of uh, the classification. A classification that is based off of the privacy policy analysis and the API documentation analysis. This is a good example that we say, if you are using a system X, a company in your such shape and form, these are probably the data types that you are using there, and it will come in the shape of a suggestion, okay? So that's kind of how we, you know, cater for all the SaaS structured platform, if you, if you will. However, if we're talking about a, a system that is more complex and unstructured, such an S3 bucket, a Google Drive, communication platform, and so on, then we want to connect with a deeper integration that will scan through basically uh, hundreds of data types under all the frameworks, uh, standard frameworks. And once we have that, if I go back here, now we will see the actual results with the specific data types, the number of records that were matched, and the deep dive of where this was actually being found. The thing is that now you have two methods that you can play with and balance in terms of what makes sense to you as a company from a cost perspective. Are you good enough with the mine AI and then complete the other part with manual tasks? Or do you want to have the complexity and the risk are too high and you want to add more and more and more integrations to the, to the game? Either way, mine will provide you with a business impact assessment, trying to help you taking the decision by flagging areas of focus and areas of risks. And then you can take a decision of where you want to go deeper where you need to go and, and, and go uh, uh, more accurate in terms of the classification. And once you are done with that, 
uh, MineAI will jump in again and will provide you with some recommendations for the processing activities and what do you do within each one of those systems. For example, here, if you are using Gong, a company in your shell shape and form, you probably do that you know, for these purposes. And basically, it will help you build the record of processing activities. And once you, you are inside, probably, you, know, you, you will probably want to do not only the activity itself, but also run a DPIA or create a data flow. So that's like a very high level. I know that we are at time, um, but basically try to kind of convey the message that building uh, uh, a, a solution that can grow together with you, start small, build on top of that based on the complexity, the risks, and uh, and so on, that's kind of uh, the approach that we have taken. Great, great. Thanks, Kobe, for the time. I know that we're a little bit about, you know, after the bottom of the hour. But uh, one more call to action that I wanted to mention, we'll go back to our existing scheduling uh, in a couple of weeks. We have an amazing webinar with one of our customers. Nick Peters is one of my favorite people to speak about privacy. He'll walk through, you know, really how to keep business and privacy hand in hand as the company is growing. Be on the lookout for that webinar on September 7th. Um, and I hope this really was as educational as, as we can, you know, and you have benefited from this. Thank you for attending. Thanks, Kobe, for sharing all the knowledge and look forward to seeing you in the next session. Thanks, everyone.